This is the down and dirty way to make copper chloride from hardware store chemicals. Copper chloride can be used at home for PCB etching, crystal growing, crystal gardens, and sometimes as a wood preservative. I mainly wanted to make some because I think it looks awesome. First, we dissolve some copper sulfate, which was purchased as root killer, in an arbitrary amount of distilled water. Since we're doing this the quick way, and using impure hardware store chemicals, we're going to use visual indications during the reaction instead of worrying about stoichiometry. Copper sulfate is incredibly soluble in water, however it dissociates slowly into solution. So even though it may take a while, up to 32 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. Once a majority of the copper sulfate is dissolved, our next step is to add in sodium carbonate. We're using sodium carbonate purchased as pool pH increaser, but you could also use baking soda or sodium bicarbonate in this reaction. For some reason, I thought it was a good idea to add a small amount of water to the sodium carbonate, but I recommend just adding it into the copper solution as a dry powder. Either way, you can see a light blue precipitate fall out of solution. This is basic copper carbonate. Copper sulfate reacts with sodium carbonate in a double displacement reaction, yielding copper carbonate and sodium sulfate, while giving off quite a bit of carbon dioxide gas. Add the sodium carbonate in slowly to prevent the beaker from bubbling over. This reaction is handy because the copper carbonate produced is incredibly insoluble in water, whereas the sodium sulfate is ridiculously soluble. This means we can filter out the newly formed copper carbonate with little effort. You can use a funnel and a coffee filter for this, but I'm using my vacuum filter to speed up the process. You can see just how fine the copper carbonate particles are. They form something that has the consistency of almost like clay. And be sure to wash your copper carbonate a few times with distilled water to remove as much sodium sulfate as possible. Now that the copper carbonate is filtered out and a decent amount of water has been removed, we transfer it to another container. I split it into two different crystallizing dishes to save some of the copper carbonate, but anyway, the last step is to add hydrochloric acid to our copper carbonate. The acid used in this video was purchased as concrete etchant. Since we're using hardware store chemicals, we just eyeball the amounts and keep adding acid into the copper carbonate until we get a clear green solution. Hydrochloric acid reacts with copper carbonate to produce our desired copper 2 chloride, water, and more carbon dioxide. After allowing the solution to sit for a while, you can see it has turned a beautiful deep green color. And just for fun, let's add a few drops of copper chloride onto a piece of aluminum foil. The two react in a single displacement reaction yielding copper metal and aluminum chloride. Hydrogen gas and a generous amount of heat is also produced. Anyway, now all you have to do is let your copper chloride solution evaporate down until crystals start forming. If you still have a small copper sulfate contamination, you can purify your copper chloride by carrying out a recrystallization or two. And that's how to make copper chloride, the down and dirty method anyway. Have fun!